We all learned about the Nazi scientists who were mainly focused on proving that the political and racial agenda of the Nazi party was based on science and facts. All their researches and experiments and technologies were directed to one reason, which is to confirm the political and racial Nazi agenda. So, scientists were not allowed to make any researches that might lead somewhere else, but their researches were preconditionally directed to confirm the biased agenda. So, the scientists should already conclude that whatever the political power dictates is scientifically right, and whoever opposes it would either be crazy, or a terrorist, or a conspiracy theorist. Nazis have played this game, and we call it the confirmation bias. Before that, religions were the unquestionable authority to confirm the political agendas, but this rule was given by the Nazis also to the academy. Academic scientists, artists, engineers, this theme is so important to me because I myself made my academic studies around 20 years ago and even today I acknowledge that I had most competent teachers who I am thankful to for giving me highly efficient tools that have served me immensely. That's why it's painful for me to see the Western Academy falling for whims and politics to take the whole civilization down with it. And those things are not new. They've always repeated themselves throughout history. It's just that it seems like recently we don't learn history, but rather our interpretations and biased information that are designed to complement the national pride. Therefore, this theme can cause us the end of the Western civilization as we know it. Now, many of us might say, oh, they were just Nazis. We are different. We are better. But let's remember that everyone thought they were different and that they were better. And that it couldn't be that their beloved, trustworthy scientists and academies and celebrities and artists were directed by their innocent, trustworthy politicians. And that there were human experiments and concentration camps. And time after time, we forgot what the mind is capable of doing and speaking and lying and hiding and blaming others, hoping to get away with it. Same thing for artists and journalists. I've been trying to make a documentary since 2017 about how the Nazi regime used artists as the sane ambassadors in order to polish its image, and how artists had no problem to sell their soul to the devil just to get paid and be acknowledged by the establishment. And today, I see how the Western democratic countries created a system where most theatres and TV channels and art galleries are financed directly or indirectly by governmental entities and politicians, indirectly through networks and universities and non-profit organizations and friends of, and directly through ministries of culture and education, who in many European countries have most influence upon the art industry, especially theatres and film and TV. So we are living today in a situation where most artists are fully dependent on the government and on governmental key positions in order to practice their profession, who turns to be vital for those who know its effect on the public opinion, but system irrelevant when the artist is not working for the public sector slash government. So when I try to interview some artists for my documentary, when the camera was off, they spoke passionately about how corrupt the art scene was and how deep the political influence upon the art scene was. But when the camera turned off, they started mumbling and reframing things in ways that didn't make sense, just to stay in line with the expectations of their potential employers and colleagues, including artists who were already ousted or retired. And I thought to myself, how can a Western artist citizen who is supposed to be constitutionally free, a free person, how can this be so afraid of the truth unless he or she are not genuinely free? Can it be that they are living in a deep illusion of freedom while being in so much denial? The Nazis used artists in order to polish their image and they used science in order to justify their crimes. So they had to make an unquestionable religion out of science. But just like any religion in human history, it must be aligned with the political agenda of those in power. Anyone who conforms might become a privileged insider. Anyone who disagrees is to be mocked and persecuted. Now, it doesn't necessarily start from the dictator. 
or from systemic dictation. It starts from the people themselves, from the academy itself, and from personal dictation. Do you think that the Wright brothers who invented the airplane were scientists with academic degrees acknowledged by the academy giving them the permission to contribute to the evolution of humanity? Not only that they didn't, but also their highest education was three years of high school and their job was to fix bicycles. Yet, their invention was one of the most revolutionary and innovative inventions in human history. And not only that they were outsiders to the academic establishment, but also they were constantly bashed by the established scientific community because they were not academically acknowledged as scientists or engineers. The Wright brothers were neither scientists nor academics. They had a skill of fixing bicycles and another skill, the skill of observation and critical thinking to think out of their own observation, not out of the observation of their bosses or professors or of their political party. Critical thinking is a substance that has been ousted from the academy today, though it was the only justification for its existence in the first place. Now, the story that is told is that the Wright brothers have invented the airplane. The story that was not told is why the European aviation community and their engineers and scientists, why have they desperately used the media slash newspapers in order to invalidate the Wright brothers' work and to bash them and to destroy their reputation? Why did those established academic people work so hard to prevent the evolution of humanity while skilled people outside the academic system's acknowledgement were actually passionately dedicated for that? Is it jealousy? Is it fear not to be credited for it? Is it because the credit and the glory goes to the underdog who made it under impossible circumstances while the privileged and resourceful academy was not competent and creative enough to justify its position? I use this example in order for us to stop worshipping the academy and to remember that academics are human beings. Scientists are human beings. Artists are human beings. Philosophers are human beings. This whole system is constructed by human beings who feel, who fear, who fall in love, who fall for anger and jealousy and pride. They have desires. They make judgments also out of their wishful thinking. They can be intimidated and threatened and therefore comply. They can fall for whims and make mistakes. And some of them, like any narcissist, might even lie about it and deny it to the grave just to get away with it and avoid their narcissistic injury. They can lock down the whole world for wrong analysis, for confirmation bias, and they would defend their assumptions to the grave, even when they are being scientifically invalidated because they are human beings. And the reason why politicians are destroying the planet in the name of the academic degrees is because they are being treated like gods, while most of them are not more than uncreative conforming bureaucrats who made their way to the top walking the safest path because they didn't have the courage to think critically and contradict the official statement, even when they could, and even when that was the only sane thing to do. The whole idea of confirmation bias is that the research is being made not to find the truth or to find a new objective fact, but rather to confirm what the one who finances the research prefers. It starts even before talking about political agendas and commercial agendas, who try to buy or to order or to shape the results. The whole journey of the student could be blocked if the student dares to outshine the professor. If a student has a genius theme that can contribute to the evolution of humanity, that could be suppressed by the professor or by the key position out of pride or jealousy. Because the professor or the key position is a human being who can feel jealous sometimes. Yeah, I know it might be surprising for some, but academics are human beings that are capable of experiencing jealousy and act upon it. That's an objective fact confirmed by the academy itself. However, eventually we find ourselves living in a world where in order to get an academic degree and to be integrated in the political social system, and especially in the public sector, one needs to shut down all critical thinking mechanisms and creativity and uniqueness because it can trigger the resistance mechanisms of the key position who has the authority to decide about your destiny, regardless of the quality of your research or the project. If your uniqueness and freedom and observation trigger the key position's jealousy, 
or pride, he or she can make a personal unregulated judgment using their authority to sabotage your work and to block your contribution and for sure prevent your integration in the system. So already in a very early step, academic students learn that they are living in a cult where in order for them to get a higher rank, they need to conform and play political games. And just like philosophy in the old times was converted into religious cults used by the political class in order to set laws and to make judgments that are in alignment with the political agenda, science is being used just like philosophy today. And it was converted into academic cults used by the political class in order to set laws and make judgments. And also used by commercial agendas in order to sell in the name of science. So we would read a scientific article about the benefits of milk and then we read another scientific article about why we should not drink milk. Both articles are scientific but each confirms what its sponsors prefer. We hear Dr. Fauci makes a scientific public statement in the beginning of 2020 saying that normal people should not wear face masks in public or do not need to wear face masks in public. And weeks later, he urges governments to force people into wearing them in the name of science. And when he is confronted on TV in the middle of 2020 with that, he explicitly admits that he lied about it. So the scientific objective statement has shifted from unnecessary into mandatory in certain countries. The same scientist, the same organization, the same politician, and it's all on the record. Some scientists in the World Health Organization inspired governments with the statement or with the idea that asymptomatic people might infect others, and that was the justification why everyone should be locked in their houses. So governments locked down their citizens for that, where people lost their jobs and wealth, where old people died out of loneliness. But when a new scientific research said from the WHO, when they said that asymptomatic people rarely infect others, did anyone apologize for that? It barely had any attention on mainstream media. And politicians, world politicians, didn't want even to talk about it. And some people who talked about it, they treated it as if it's a trivial subject. While it's the essence of the debate, the same doctor, Fauci, urges governments to lock down the whole world in their houses, then prevent them from social interaction and force them into breathing toxic air. The same doctor says he lied about it for a hidden agenda. And it doesn't seem like it bothered many people. It doesn't even it seems to move the free Western citizen into action because he's a scientist. Is freedom only a myth? Even people who consider themselves to be intelligent and intellectuals and progressive and factual and science disciples, look the other side, ignored that totally. That didn't change anything for them. While it's a statement that is supposed to reverse everything, but we are not dealing with facts or with truth. We are dealing with interests and egos. All researchers show on the mainstream media why everyone must wear a face mask, but no one article on mainstream media about the dangers of face masks or the dangers of breathing the toxic CO2 and the psychological effects of constant anxiety and fear, but rather a vicious systematic campaigns of trivializing and normalizing the usage of face masks when it's most dangerous. No one such article on mainstream media about their danger. Where are all the scientists? So if 10 cases would be tested positive, not dead, only tested positive, that would be all over the news with systematic fear campaigns. But if millions of people face breathing challenges and other destructive side effects for wearing the mandatory face masks, we won't hear anything about them on mainstream media. Not only we will not read or hear about them, but we would read articles about how to cope with that, how to breathe in the mask, how to convince your six years old child to wear the mask, and organized criminality preventing six years old children from breathing clean air in the name of science. And it doesn't seem to bother much, including people who think they are intellectual and progressive. Now, of course, there are also scientists who do speak the truth, but their voices cannot reach out. Their voices cannot reach the mass media because as we said, they are not conforming and they are not confirming the political bias. So those who really want to hear facts need to make some effort in researching and reaching out also to the academically acknowledged independent scientists. 
who have no place on the mainstream media. Commercial agendas and politicians of these days are using science as a religion and using corrupt scientists as priests to confirm and justify their political crimes. Of course, I have no ability to influence the whole planet to consider that, but at least we can be aware of this in our personal lives. We have so many people around us that we look up to and those who seem to be socially validated or look charismatic or even some of them who say they are experts. Critical thinking can sometimes be way more relevant than any assumption of those who appear authoritarian or those who enjoy an unregulated authority to decide for us about our own lives. I hope I could shed some light on this and share some of my thoughts. Thank you everyone for staying with me. I'm Shreddy Jabari. Ciao.